Welcome to the Packard Academy. I'm Rick Streaker, Packard's National Training Coordinator. Today we're going to talk about a brand new product that Packard has called the EC Max. The EC Max is a constant torque electronically commutated motor that can be used to replace OEM constant torque motors, but in addition to that, the very same EC Max can be used to replace PSC motors. So we're going to talk about how this is wired in order to do that and show the ease of connection that this motor requires. With the motor, electrical connections are also provided. The connections include a high voltage power harness and a high voltage signal harness, and they are identified as power or signal. Also have a low voltage signal harness that is provided. So the harnesses are connected to the motor. We select the voltage of the motor by using a, a couple of pins. We have a choice for either 115 volt or a choice for 230. The motor, as it comes in, is set for 230. The yellow plug would go into the motor if I want 230. There are no conductors in that. It's filling space and protecting that nothing gets in to the ports on that plug. We're going to connect this particular motor for 115 volts. I take the 115 volt white plug, which has conductors, and insert it into the connector. I then take my high voltage harness, and it can only be installed one way. Connect it into the motor, and then take my low voltage harness and connect it into the motor. I now have my leads attached to the motor. Now I want to connect this to a board. This is just an example of a typical board and your board may be different on a particular furnace that you're working on. On this particular board, I attach my black, since I have this as 115 volts, and I'm going to be assuming I'm replacing a PSC motor in this case. I attach my black to L1. I attach white to L2 or neutral. Since I'm replacing a PSC rather than an EC, I only need one of the signal wires. Since this is replacing a PSC, I will use the black signal wire if I were replacing an EC, a constant torque EC, I would use the red signal wire. But in this case, since I'm replacing the PSC, I'll cap off the red and attach the black signal wire to my cool terminal on the board. The EC Max also has jumpers that can be used to continue my circuit on the high voltage. I take one of the red jumpers and I attach it to cool. And jumper that to heat on my board. This particular board does not ha have a constant fan feature on it. 
If there were a constant fan, I would use my second jumper from heat to provide high voltage to my continuous fan. The harness for the torque taps are clearly identified. And these are the low voltage taps for the motor. The taps are color coded. Blue is the low voltage common. Yellow is high torque. Orange, medium high torque. Brown, medium low torque. And white, low torque. These are torques, but the torques vary. A lot of people think of these as speed taps. The result is a speed, but if I have a set load on this motor, and I have four different taps that are applying four different torques to that load, then I would see that that load would turn at varying speeds as I would use the different torque taps. The blue, the 24 volt common, is attached to the terminal block at 24 volt common. The high, or yellow, is attached to my cool demand, cooling demand, which is Y. My medium high is attached to W for my heat demand. Now, in our example, we'll cap off the brown and white lead. However, the technician could choose to use brown and white if they would like different speeds than what they receive using the orange and yellow. So any of the four leads, the torque leads, could be used in combination in order to customize the output that the technician would like for that particular furnace or air handler. When attaching the belly band or mounting bracket to the motor, the belly band should be located on the lamination stack, which would be above the lamination notches in the shell, and that will provide good strong support to that belly band on the shell of the motor. It should not cover any of the vent holes on the motor, which would prevent from air circulating properly through that motor. The connector, when the motor is mounted, should be as close to the down position as possible, and the leads going to the connector should have a drip loop, a small loop, which if moisture, condensation, were to roll down the leads of the motor, would not go back uphill into the connector. The motor is now connected to the board, installed in the furnace, and the very first time that the motor is powered up, the motor is designed to seek its rotation. That is, it will operate in one rotation and stop. It then goes the opposite rotation and stops. And it's possible that it could do this multiple times while it's trying to determine which rotation provides the greatest load. The greatest load will result in the rotation being selected in that direction with that load on it. And the motor is now ready to run. We appreciate you attending the Packard Academy. Thanks so much. We hope to see you again soon.